that. But when it gets to be a whole grouping of these guys, I got to come and talk to Shannon. <laughs> I got to lay it down at the altar. You know every comedian. This, that... this is the other side of Kirk Franklin prank. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reckoning. 2024. The you, reckoning. You watch that. You know every comedian that's been on my show. You know you watch every episode. No, you that's not what you said. You said I know every comedian. You know every comedian. You're right? limiting me. Oh, you watch every episode. Because you 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 know things. You know things. I that <laughs> <laughs> That's always where I'm trying to come from, whether it's comedic or otherwise. That's why even if you see me get arrested 10 times in a row on TV, as a fan of mine, you can be like, he's going to be right out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they just said he didn't do it. He couldn't have. It's stupid. Why would he do something stupid knowing he got to come back and talk to us? Nah, they they respect that every time it happens, I'm going to be free as a bird sitting out here talking to you about it. That it really was what I said it was. That's all. You end up, you come down, you're in L.A. Yeah. Now, I'm reading. Cat Williams won Cedric the Entertainers and Hiza Bush Best, L L Best Los Angeles Comic Award. Did you win that award, won Cat Williams? It's a simple yes or no. It's not a rhetorical question. It's a question that probably should have been asked to Cedric the Entertainer. I'm asking you. I got you here, though. I know. I couldn't <laughs> believe Cedric didn't get asked that question. <laughs> you still a dude's joking and giving an award, and then 10 years later, you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I, but I promise you this. What? If he sees me again before he sees you. He'll be talking different when you see it. That's for certain. That's the difference. That's what these comics understand, is that I'm not doing nothing for clout. I don't even recognize clout. But eventually, the Lord is going to let me and you be in one hallway. A lot of these dudes go... Kevin Hart done went 25 years without ever being in the same building with me at the same time. What, so what's, if what's, I go in the building, he walk out. You've never seen us in the same building ever in 25 years. Like, it's like that. <laughs> Why? Why? Yes. Because what? I'm really the product. It's not what you think. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. I have far less play in me than you would like. And I'm relentless. I'm out there. I'm still to this day. I play 11 games of basketball with a 20 year old. The record is 92 and six. This is just in the yard, just to the rack, just cause. You work out cat? I mean, no, you work out cat? Uh, not to the gym. You don't work out the gym? You push ups, sit ups? I, my whole life it was, um, it was just push ups and sit ups only. I would do like, um, a hundred push ups a day. Just. I thought you were going to say a thousand. No, no, no. <laughs> because this is literally every day. Right. This is not for the, yeah for the gram, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like uh, literally a hundred <laughs> a day. And I would do push-ups, and then I tore both my rotator cuffs. And so it was only thanks to golf that I was even able to get my- You a golfer now? Back. I, I've been a golfer for quite some time. My short game is impeccable. I I, I can't get you but but two and some change off of the- um, The tee. Off the tee, but I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm still coming in for par guarantee. Are you playing for the tips? Uh, no, I've, I've found that you don't get anything for that. <laughs> it seems like, it seems very ego maniacal. They go, hey, cat, for free, you can go further back. <laughs> hey, what? Wait a minute, does it still count the same? Hey, I'm up at the ladies' tee. Don't tell me my pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> On the golf course, I'm she, her, him, them, and they. Whoever, whoever the front tee.
we're, I know we're joking, we're having a great conversation, but you did win the award. How did the award <laughs> help your career? It had to help something, Cat. Nope. No. Nope. God, come on, Cat. I didn't remember it happened until you just said it. Set, how can Cedric give you an award that was worth something? Everything Cedric and Ricky Smiley ever been in got canceled for not being funny. Ricky sat here and told you that they cut him out of every movie he did. They always had a reason. Right? <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> That's why I'm funny, because I'm a happy person. I laugh all day long. I can't even imagine the misery of these bums. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not be good at what you do, not work hard at what you do, but have to act like you the best at what you do. It is crazy. It's crazy. But they be touring, they 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 be doing like a hundred shows a year. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't run into none of them. That's what I'm saying. If you a phase I love fan, you mean you've been a fan of him for 32 years, you still waiting on him to do his first special? You mean to tell me if Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand-up for 15 years now? I mean, Steve got a, got a, a lot of other DL, DL's still out there. None of those irons matter to stand-up. Who cares that they wrote a plaque card for you to do Family Feud on? Like, you're... So you're successful because we're surprised you can talk for a living and it's entertaining that you're gonna say some funny country things. But not a writer. Right. Not a writer. How did you develop Money Mike and get it? I mean, that, I mean, everybody talk Money Mike. Is, how? How did you come up with that and say, you know what? This is how he should dress. This is how he should talk. This is how he should look. This is the kind of whip he should ride. This is how he should talk. So if you'll remember that that was my first movie, just understand that what I did then, I've done with every single role, whether it was an Emmy winning role or whether it wasn't, whether I was playing somebody homeless, whether I was playing a dirty vagabond on Atlanta, whether it was an eccentric guy in First Sunday, regardless of what the role is, the first thing I do is erase me from it. Okay. So anything that I would naturally do, mm -hmm. that's what I'm not going to do okay. because I'm playing a different You're character. Playing the character. Okay. Right. So I then create this person based upon real life circumstances. So I don't have to wonder what a pimp thinks because I've been in that position for a little while. I also worked manual labor for some time in my life, so I don't have a problem paying somebody that works. And I don't have a problem uh, being a go-getter because I'm a go-getter. So I bring whatever I can to these characters. I was able to... Um, the first week that I got the script, there was a, a pimp guy that used to be a pimp, but he wasn't anymore. He was a rapper now, and his name was Mac Minister. And he um, had been a pimp and was going to be a rapper. And I had never done a movie before. I was a stand-up and I'm getting ready to do the movie. And so I was able to craft what a real pimp was like, what was too much. I didn't want to be stereotypical. Right. I, I, I did the research. I saw how many times people played pimps and they were always... It was always something weird about them, right. I guess, because it's a weird job. You know what I mean? Right. And I wanted somebody that didn't seem like none of that, that he really thought it was a business and treated it like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those adding those levels to acting is what all actors do if they're not Steve or Cedric or Ricky. Mm -hmm. Like you're trying to create a character. You don't you can't just be phase on in every movie like you just gonna take your shirt off on every movie like why does it say that in your script man let big worm live let it breathe cat let big, let, let, let big worm breathe stall him out now you having an unnatural and I had never done a movie before. I was a stand-up and I'm getting ready to do the movie.
somebody just showed up and gave them a little blessing. Nope. They didn't offer it to me anyway. Oh, he had two points. <laughs> what are you talking about? You work out care? I mean, no, you work out I could tell minutes. How do I know I'm funnier than you? Because you got six laughs and I got 16. Just like it was and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, again, I'm, I'm on the winning side of these <laughs> decisions. You know, look, I've had Cube, I've talked to Cube, and a lot of people say Cube don't, doesn't pay. What's your relationship? of dollars to fix this right they're not telling me what it's gonna look like i go get an estimate with no all by the wayside and the guys that have the talent and they get elevated bumps does it not be good at what you do not work hard at what you do but have to act like you the best at what you do it is crazy it's crazy. But they be touring, they, they, they be doing like a hundred shows a year. Right, and work hard and don't steal other people's material. And I'm making sure that they all make $300,000 a, a, a season. And I'm making sure that they're not ever signed to me or my conglomerate. And that's why they're successful. No, you can work with me. And still be. Be an independent businessman, boss owner, like you came in. Right. I don't need you to be subservient to me. That's those other guys that make you pay dues. <laughs> you said earlier that you rewrote a lot of what Money Mike was to say and how he behaved. So they allowed you the the the, the freedom, the liberty to ad lib. How much would they allow you to just make an interception if it didn't nobody talk about it? As a football player, if the ball no, comes your way, can you just grab it? Can you make an interception anytime? Are you allowed to pick up any fumble? Yeah. Are you you can do any hustling, yeah. right? Oh, okay, same here. Same here. But here's the thing though. Even as a, even as an offensive player, yeah. they might let me add live once I get a couple of years under my breath. They wouldn't let me add live as a rookie. That was your first movie. I I told you the conversation in my first movie, just because I'm I am committed to laughs. The only way I made it past those 300 comedians, I didn't tell you this. What it required is I had to watch all 300 comedians 10 times a piece. I watched your set 10 times of you performing, whoever you were, and then I counted how many laughs you got every time you did these amount of minutes. So if you told me this, uh, comedian and told me he did 30 minutes, I could tell you that he got 26 laughs in that 30 minutes because I had done the numbers on everybody. So I didn't just say I was funnier. I knew I was funnier than the comic you liked and I could tell you how many jokes funnier I was because that's how we judge stand up. You do 15 minutes, I do 15 minutes. How do I know I'm funnier than you? Because you got six laughs. A uh, comedian and told me he did 30 minutes. I could tell you that he got 26 laughs in that 30 minutes because I had done the numbers on everybody. So I didn't just say I was funnier. I knew I was funnier than the comic you liked. And I could tell you how many jokes funnier I was because that's how we judge stand up. You do 15 minutes. I do 15 minutes. How do I know I'm funnier than you? Because you got six laughs and I got six. I'm almost three times better than you, low key boy boy, but I'm never gonna tell you the formula. So you gonna keep just going out there telling jokes. Now I understand it that I psychologically, the audience by 10 years is convinced that I'm funnier than you. They just don't know why. Cause I'm putting out more content better. I had Terry Crews on here. He said at the time that you did the movie, you were homeless. Is that true? Um, this was my situation. I, 
about five months prior to me getting this first audition for Friday After Next, I got this baby son. I'm holding him up above me. He grabs my little chain. He's playing with it and he accidentally drops it. It breaks out my front two teeth. I'm in a situation now where when I go to the dentist, they telling me this is going to cost thousands and thousands of dollars to fix this right. They're not telling me what it's going to look like. I go get an estimate with no money involved, find out what I need to do. They find out you got a tumor in your upper jaw, so we're going to have to do a whole surgery for you. It's going to be a hundred bands. I don't have it. I don't have it. And um, I'm only going to have this check from this movie. So while I'm doing this movie, we live in this trailer. Um, this is where we live. So when they come to work at five in the morning, we already there. When they leave at night, we still there. We just double back um, because we understood that this is our one opportunity. Um, and we have this opportunity to change our lives. It's like a young man going for the draft. Right. We can actually get in the league with this. There are 30 comedians on this cast. They're all magnificent. This is the holy grail of the situation. Um, so, yeah, I was able to make sure that because it wasn't just my first movie. It was K.D. Albert's first movie. It was Terry Crews' first movie. Absolutely. I was the leader of this group, which meant that we did. We didn't do their rehearsals. They did rehearsal. We did our own rehearsals daily to make sure that we were at the level of professional actors, which is what made it so egregious, that guy. Say, I was supposed to, you were supposed to what? Candy did have a good part in the movie, man. The Santa Claus was funny, man. The dude said the entire time we were filming, I can't play this role. They got a bandana over my nose and my mouth. My family not even gonna know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tell your story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's Ted, uh, Terry Cruz also said that you guys had a lot of had a lot of conversation that this was your opportunity and you needed to seize this moment. Terry had the benefit of having been in some very high profile situations already and took L's. Mm -hmm. Like he had been in the league. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He 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 had um, done pro wrestling. He had done a lot of things. He had been televised and some things that hadn't worked. Right. And this was just fortuitous for him. And now you know what nobody has ever said in the whole industry in 20 years about, you know, the whole money Mike not getting raped in the bathroom. Right. So I understood going in that there's no reason. I lost every... For a five year period, every single movie that Kevin Hart did was a movie that had been on my desk that all I had said was just can we take some of this step and fetch it shit out and then I can do it like it don't need to be overtly homosexual because I'm not homosexual. Right. It doesn't the need that right. to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. And and me saying that and them going, oh yeah, no problem. And then going to give it to this other guy and having him do it just like it was and acting like I'm a bad person because I keep standing on my standard. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's interesting, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, again, I'm, I'm on the winning <laughs> side of this. <laughs> decisions you know look i've had cube i've talked to cube and a lot of people say cube don't doesn't pay what's your relationship with Cube, and what did that opportunity mean for you well the ungrateful bastards that would say anything about cube's payment you shouldn't even talk to them anymore like you don't you don't go to Goodwill, you don't go to a Goodwill thrift store and go, look at all this cheap ass shit. <laughs> Why don't you shut up? Why don't you shut up? You could have went to Hermes. Why you didn't go to Balenciaga? Why you didn't get a bowl of the ball man you want to have that conversation? Right. What you mean the independent black dude who's filming it partly out of his fucking pocket? What you mean he didn't pay you enough? They weirdos. 
weirdos that felt like they earned the opportunity because they were big. No, no, yeah. I understood. That ain't no two hundred million dollar movie. Well, I mean, how much did you expect you was gonna make? Well, I made enough to get them teeth fixed just like you did. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I <laughs> it was no harm, no foul. I knew that I was gonna go from there, and there was no there was no turning back for Cat Williams. Though. Well, here's the thing. Um, I wrote it. What I'm saying, I'm saying, if I did it and I did a good job at it, you can thank me. I was involved. Right. I'm not gonna come later on and tell you I never even read the whole script. So how you know what rose? What? What do you mean you never read? The <laughs> like, you, like these guys' whole job is to present something. Unfortunately, and I'm just not a presenter. If you ask me a question, I'm just going to tell you the truth of how it went. Would you be willing to do another Friday? Cube already asked me to write it. I was supposed to have been writing it. That's this is what these guys are mad about. Like <clears throat> we lost some great people. before this movie mm -hmm. could come out regardless. Right. And so, yes, there desperately needs to be one. Um, um, but um, we miss John Witherspoon in a way that can't really be quantified, right. if I'm being honest with you. And um, the Chris Tucker that we got now is Epstein Island Chris Tucker, oh, okay. not Smokey. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Whew. If I didn't know no better, I'd tell you he's the greatest. I don't care what to say. <laughs> 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 to be confident and not delusional is a real skill. Most of these confident people we see is really delusional. Well, you don't think you don't think they asked Chris Tucker to come back in the second in the snip in the second Friday? Smokey, Smokey was all in Smokey. There ain't no Friday without Smokey. We all agree to that. And there's no next Friday without Friday. And there's no Friday after next without nah, Friday. Nah, we talk about the road because you said that they don't. Here's the thing. Okay. Here's the thing. Chris was allowed to make the decision. At the time that this is happening, Cat Williams is known for smoking weed. Willie Nelson is known for smoking weed. Right. Snoop's known for smoking weed. But none of us is really known except Willie. And I'm saying, Chris Tucker didn't want to be the poster child for smoking weed. He don't right. smoke weed like that. Right. Right. He in the church. He Michael Jackson's best friend. Christmas. Michael Jackson called him Christmas. You ever met a man that gave you a little nickname like that? No. Mm -mm, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the greatest. Man, I ain't gonna be able to get nobody back. I ain't gonna be able to get no more comedians. They all coming. No, they ain't. Are you kidding? Nah. Hey, I promise you. I done got all the rest I, of them. I done got, I done got the ones. Every, I promise you, everybody trying to double back. You're gonna be having to beat them <laughs> off with a stick. <laughs> you won't you let him. They're coming. <sighs> Much as. <laughs> you on Def Comedy Jam Comic View? What were those experiences like? What do you What do you remember most about Def Comedy Jam and Comic View? Uh, Comic View was everything. Um, Comic View was really the break, um, and not Friday after next, just because Comic View was just three thousand of your stand up peers, and we just throw sets of all of them up there, and we see who the audience likes. Who do they like? And um, it was a great wild, wild west time to be involved in comedy. And um, the same is true for Def Jam because uh, hip hop was a fad at one time. Hip hop ain't gonna last. And why are you doing that? Um, and that's how it was for blue comedy. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a comedian that cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream 
comedy mm-hmm. geist. That would be like me being on Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on there. I need to be on Shannon. Joe, Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> 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 but that's really how it is. I'm so sorry I'm competitive. You're an athlete, right? You yeah, understand. yeah, I, I can tell. You understand. Will there ever be another comic you, Def Comedy Jam? Can, could, could that in today, in 24, 25, 26, could we see that again? They've already announced it. It's already going. You didn't know? Mm-mm. Yeah, Kevin Hart purchased it, so he's now doing uh, Comedy View. That happened at the same time that they gave DC Young Fly uh, Hollywood Squares. Where? Yeah, because they tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? And he now opening it up for... Don't such and such open the gate. But what do you mean ain't no gatekeepers? There's a hundred gates out here. Would you? I, have, I, everyone I've seen got a keeper. Would you have wanted to do Comic View or Def Comedy Jam? Would you have wanted to be? I, I think we just mentioned I did them both. No, I'm saying he purchased the rights and refranchise it. Nope. They didn't offer it to me anyway. <clears throat> Like, Comic View did a couple of disservices to comedy as well. Mm-hmm. So there were people like me that were out there getting two and three standing ovations in one set. And that wasn't good for television. So what they did was they started making everybody get a standing ovation. So they would tell the audience, when they get off stage, everybody get up and cheer. And so now the fact that I'm the only one out there going to get standing ovations is now making people think everybody get a standing ovation. Mm. And that's not how comedy is. So right. I, I understood why that couldn't go anymore. Because remember, Ricky Smiley sat right here and told you a story about how he performed with uh Mike Epps and Cat Williams when he did Comic View and to let him tell it. <clears throat> he was funnier than both. <laughs> My name Lil Dow. <laughs> yeah, talking about the special needs. That's ooh, that's good. That's a different type. That's ty- some that, clever material. That was a different time, Cat. No, it wasn't. It yeah. was the time I was there. But I'm saying that time, this time, same times. No, but I'm saying just th- like people that tell you the Egyptians, they not black. Egypt is in Africa, folks. Yeah. As long as Egypt is in Africa, then Egyptians are African. Do you believe you could tell the same jokes today as when you started out? I mean, Eddie Murphy not telling those jokes. Richard Pryor not being able, wouldn't be able to tell those jokes in 2024 that they told in the 70s and the 80s. So they wouldn't have told them. But that's my point. They're not inferior people. No. If they were in this time, they would be going according to our time. Just like then we were going according to that. Like that's how it is in the world. There are words that we can use for a while. And when we use them for a while until somebody says that ain't a good word, yeah. we should stop saying that. Correct. That don't make people feel good. And we stop saying the word and we move on to another word. You can't say the R word. You can certainly say special needs. Yeah. You can certainly say spectrum. You can, you can, you, there are things that you can say to get your point that don't have to hurt people. Right. But you would know that if what you did was construct the English language for a living, Mm -hmm. then you would understand that part. You financed your first stand up. You had 20, it cost you 22. Thousand, you had twenty five to your name. Yep. What? Why did you decide to do that? You you believe you you believe that much in cat? I believe that much in business. In business, the goal is for you to become independent and be the boss, take the responsibility, and also get the profit. Okay. That's all. How 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 can I be looking for you to put me on if I wouldn't? And if I can't show you what you missed out on, why would you believe me? Now, the fact that I was able to do it 12 times. That's the real thing. The thing, the part that I'm able to do it all across the country. The fact that every time I do a tour or a special, you think well, that's sponsored by somebody. Somebody did a good job. No, no, just 
just the guy they're kicking around, just the one who might mentally not be all there. He's the one picking the outfits, writing this guy's material, booking the shows, making sure he gets there. He's the one hiring the other comedians. He's, but hey, I knew that that's the end goal. So if that's the end goal and I'm there when I start, why would I deviate from that? Right. Remember, I, 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 I I, my goal was to get this far in Hollywood and still have a virgin asshole <laughs> and I never have sucked a penis. That was my only goal. I didn't want to get with a white woman because I was scared. She might have me running down the street like Jonathan Bitch, you gonna be, come on, cat. Not because I didn't like white women. I think white women are as great as any other women. But I'm not going to act like I'm not scared of them. I have a reason to be scared. You could be Kang the Conqueror and they could take your rabbit ass down in two weekends. And that's the truth of the matter. So I stayed away from that. And remember, I told you the drug story from when I'm in the park. Yeah. So these are just the things I had all of those when I came in. I already was ready for that. That's what they don't like. I did not know you're, you're telling me and showing me a side of the business.